imagine that you could like talk to the guy who invented the cell phone. I mean, that's what I get to do. I'm like filled with questions. When you walk down the street and you see cell phones everywhere, you must feel something that the average person doesn't have, doesn't feel. Do you feel some some kind of pang, some kind of ownership, some kind of hey, I did that? Well, it, it certainly makes me feel good. And, and what makes me feel good is that people's lives have improved. And if you think about it, that is the role of the engineer. That, that's all I am as an engineer. And uh, technology doesn't mean a thing unless it makes people's lives better. And, hey. uh, and I believe that the cell phone has done that. I, well, well, but isn't it something like the guy who invented dynamite? I mean, isn't it <laughs> a blessing and a curse? Is he, is he a charmer or what? <laughs> <laughs> My thought was, this is now 1972. The FCC is about to make a decision. What can I do to really get their attention? And so, we built a real cellular telephone. And if I look oh. around, I'll find it. You're kidding. And there it is. Oh. Oh. Dude. So I'd like to ask you to do a quick review for the audience. <laughs> exactly. Motorola's new StarTAC 2012. Wow, look at that. It's like a piece of Soviet Army field equipment. Is this is this pretty much what the phone was that you used it's to It's identical in size, weight, in every respect. At a, a two and a half pounds, at a, uh, a 20 minute battery life. Not a problem. You couldn't hold it up for two. And four. <laughs> you said that you still think we're at the the Cro-Magnon era of cell phones. We're still at the beginning. Yeah, we have, the industry is still in its infancy. It's in its infancy because we're trying to do things like uh, universal phones that do all things for all people. And, and you've got to know that if you try to do all things for all people in one device, it won't do any of them very well. So we're still creating what I think are toys, very useful toys. But the future of the world is in personalization, customization. We all have different needs, different desires, uh, different uh, uh, understandings of, of things. And we ought to be able to have a device that's designed and optimized for everything that we do. People always think that new technology is going to kill the technology, and it never works out that way. Color television did not kill radio like it was supposed to, and, and the DVD did not kill going out to the theater like it. They just add on. You're right. We lots of incremental steps forward to achieve my dream of telemedicine is going to take a generation. It's going to take 30 years or longer, but boy, the benefits of that dream are going to be enormous. Are you talking about the implantable stuff? Well, I'm talking about the concept that every disease, now listen to this, I mean, I, every disease can be actionably prevented. Every disease. Now, I know that I could start a huge argument with people here, but if you can sense that a disease is about to happen in somebody's body, there are things that we know about today, we still have to learn a lot to stop that disease before it becomes a disease. It's not a disease till it affects you. And so someday it's going to take like a million times improvement in our ability to sense things. We're going to have to be, as an example, be able to sense a, a few cells of cancer. And, and the cures, the way of stopping these things, there's an enormous amount of work that has to be done there. But all of that is predictable. And it's going to happen within the next 20, 30, 40 years.